Hey guys, is this a new video? Right, sorry, I thought we were still having that January break. I guess me and Matthew got a bit bored, didn't we? I knew, I knew we'd end up coming back early. <sighs> sorry, I forgot. Just uh, give me a second. Uh, I can't do a new video in my pyjamas, can I? Uh, let me, give, me a, give me a second. Ah, that's better. Anyway, hey there, welcome to Heretics Reviews, I'm James Wilson and today I will be reviving a video series that I did last year. It was my Doctor Who character reviews. Last year I did a character review of Clara Oswald, but today I'm going to be doing a brand new and updated character review of Jenna Coleman's Clara Oswald because of her huge improvement in Series 8. So then guys, enjoy. <laughs> Guys, I'm not going to go too deep into Series 7 Part 2 because, as we all know, it wasn't exactly the best of beginnings for Clara Oswald or Jenna Coleman in her career uh, on Doctor Who, but I'm going to try and skim through it as much as possible. So, as we all know, when Series 7 began with the Silent of the Daleks, uh, not long before that, it was announced that Karen Gill and Natha Dava were going to be leaving uh, midway through Season 7, and it was also announced that Jenna Coleman was to replace them as uh, the character of Clara Oswald. Now, to see her before she had actually uh, been planned to appear in Christmas 2012 that was just mind blowing and just incredibly confusing and to not actually and to and for her to die at the end was actually very very surprising for me and Matthew I remember me and him uh, were just sitting down munching on jelly babies or I don't know what we were what we were eating or drinking at the time and and I just told Matthew hey oh my god that is actually that's the new companion and Matthew was like oh my god it is and uh, so you know it was it was a very mind blowing experience like that but uh, incredibly underwhelming when you get down to the end of it uh, but anyway, uh, we uh, it was then discovered at the end of Asylum of the Daleks that sadly Oswin Oswald was actually killed and manufactured into a Dalek and died to save the Doctor, Amy and Rory uh, in the exploding Dalek Asylum. So yeah, she died for a very noble cause, very lovely death I think. And uh, also in The Snowmen we met her again and of course this was her real proper um, appearance as the companion, I guess, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, I don't know where my head at. Is, is at with that one, with that one I'll be. I'll be honest. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Clara uh, was then seen again, and she was actually called Clara this time, and she was playing a Victorian uh, Victorian maid, uh, or was she a barmaid? I really don't know. She was she was a governess, or she was a barmaid. Hmm, really don't know on that one. Uh, but anyway, she plummeted to her death, sadly, falling from Victorian London, and died again, uh, doing a doing a Rory Williams, really, in that way. Uh, but anyway, once the once the Eleventh Doctor discovers that it was, in fact, Oswin and Clara were the same person, uh, he then goes on a wild goose chase to try and find out and discover who Clara Oswald is, and of course, that leads into Series 7 Part 2. Now, when you get down to the end of Series 7 Part 2, it's really really not that good. I mean, honestly, the stories, a majority of them were rather dreadful, uh, And uh, but at the same time, I still think they're a, they're a, they are quite an improvement from uh, the first half of Season 7. Um, but still, at the same time, uh, I think that uh, Clara Oswald's character was incredibly underwhelming, and, uh, and there was no real character traits that we could like about her at the very beginning of her tenure. I think she was just uh, far too cardboard and far too two-dimensional. You know, she did didn't really pop out for me. Um, but I will say this, I definitely thought that there was an aspect to Clara's wardrobe and the way her hair was looked and the way her makeup looked. It definitely gave a sort of contemporary look, edge to the uh, to a Doctor Who companion, but also gave a very classic edge to it. It sort of reminded me a little bit of Sarah Jane Smith. Of course, uh, Clara Oswald, let's be honest, has nothing on Sarah Jane Smith and her legendary status, status God rest Elizabeth Sladen. But anyway, I, I think she had a very classic edge to her, which I think was really refreshing and um but anyway moving on from series 7 part 2 uh finally after that and after the 11th doctor had departed the role uh we were then introduced to the 12th doctor and this was when it went boom you know this is when the character popped out i i think you'll i think you'll find for all of us you know the character just really improved a thousandfold right from deep breath you know we just saw so much of her we saw actual human emotions about her as well we saw the control freak about her that uh, that she briefly talked about in time of the doctor you know when she was caught by the truth field and uh, she just blurted out that she was a control freak so yeah this was definitely something about her character traits that we definitely 
discovered more. And I think the 12th Doctor and her dynamic with Peter Capaldi has definitely helped to progress her character very, very much throughout Series 8. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so Deep Breath was absolutely brilliant. Uh, she, there was flashbacks to her first day at Coal Hill, and uh, she used what Courtney, Courtney Woods had said to her. Um, uh, she used that against the uh, the half fist man to call his bluff and I think that was incredibly good I think and and and, I, and like I said I think the twelfth Doctor has sort of challenged Clara's character in a way and I think that is incredibly good for a Doctor to do and every great Doctor does that every great Doctor uh, always helps to progress a character development always helps to push it along and I think that that's definitely what we've had in series eight and uh, of course uh, later on in series eight it it was. It was really rather quite annoying as it got on because, of course, there was a huge um, falling out with the Doctor and Clara in uh, at the end of Kill the Moon because the Doctor had abandoned Clara, uh, or she feels uh, that, uh, that, that, that the Doctor abandoned her on the moon to, to just make a decision for herself. And, uh, and just because the Doctor uh, left it to Clara to make a decision, you know, that she then goes in a mood and she walks out and says to the Doctor, don't you ever come near me again and, you know, makes a very EastEnders sort of exit. Uh, but, uh, and, and I really did think that that was a great ending. Uh, at the time, I really thought that that was a brilliant ending and I and I really, really loved it. But then the next week, as we all pretty much uh, really did despise, I think you'll all remember, uh, it was revealed that Clara Oswald was to be in the next episode. And I think that she should have at least took one episode out of the series. I think that that would have been a lot better. You know, I always loved episodes like Midnight or, the, or, or David Tennant's Final Four specials, where really he wasn't actually hooked onto a companion. So I really think that that was... I, I love it when the Doctor doesn't have a companion for, for, for a long period of time. And plus, Clara wasn't exactly that much of a pop-out character in the Mummy and the, on the Orient Express, let's be honest. I mean, she was just stuck in a room for half of the episode with that blonde character, P Mrs. Pitt or, or something like that. And I think it was, uh, um, uh, I, I don't remember her name. I'll be honest, I don't remember her name. Uh, but yeah, she was stuck in a closet for most of the time. So yeah, I don't really see the point in Clara Oswald in Mummy on the Orient Express. So it wouldn't have really made a difference if she wasn't in the episode. So yeah, I would have much preferred if the Doctor went solo in Mummy on the Orient Express. But still, it really doesn't take anything away from Mummy, because I really do love Mummy on the Orient Express. I think it's one of the best episodes in in, in Series 8. Um, but yeah, and then pretty much uh, what happened again is that uh, the Doctor uh, fast forward again in the series, and uh, yeah, there was a brief moment in, in The Forest of the Night, which me and Matthew will both agree, and I hope you guys will as well, is the weakest written episode. Well, uh, actually, Last Christmas kind of beats in the Forest of the Night a little bit, uh, but that's kind of debatable for you guys. But anyway, um, but yeah, fast forward into In the Forest of the Night, and yeah, there was a brief moment where Clara and uh, and Danny were having a bit of a having a bit of a argument uh, as towards Clara's. Um, Clara's sort of attitude towards time travel and her attitude towards normal life, really. And I think that that's something that I, I'm not going to go into Danny Pink too much because uh, I can probably tell you guys right now that I am actually going to be doing a character review of Danny Pink as well at some point down the line, so I will get down to this. But what I will say is that Danny Pink, again, has helped to progress Clara's character a little bit, helped to f make her feel actual human emotions, which, again, is a very big improvement from uh, from Series 7 Part 2. Um, and, yeah, but uh, in The Forest of the Night, there was a great speech from Danny Pink where he just said, I want to see things more clearly. I want to be here. I want to be here on earth in present day right here right now that's where i want to be and clara isn't like that she wants to be out there seeing the universe and i think that's a lesson that i think she could have learned from danny but of course it was too late because fast forward again to the uh, uh, to dark water where sadly uh, clara oswald had uh, had reached a huge brick wall in terms of her character which was the death of danny pink and and she definitely reacted in a very very sort of a very human way and i think that was that was very very good and I think the way she would reacted to the doctor in a way I think was was rather human as well because if you have a man that has a blue box that has a time machine and you've seen the doctor throughout his entire life and you've seen him change 
loads of different you've he, he, she's seen him cheat time many many times so yeah it's it's uh so yeah she she pretty much tries to blackmail the doctor in that volcano scene where she's throwing the tardis keys into into the lava which again was a little bit of a a, a pointless move because the doctor can just click his fingers so yeah uh that was again a bit of an anti-climax and i just thought to myself throughout that scene the doctor can just click his fingers in fact, Clara knows that. She has clicked her fingers in Series 8, in in, uh, in The Caretaker. She was clicking her fingers to close and open the door. So I really just don't get what that scene was all about. It's like it, the, that, the, the clicking fingers thing just completely went out of the window. And Stephen Moffat was the one who set up the clicking fingers thing. In The, in the Silence in the Library two-parter, he was the one who set up the whole clicking fingers thing. So Stephen Moffat pretty much walked all over something he pretty much thought of. But, uh, but anyway... So yeah, Clara Oswald then left again in uh, in uh, at the end of Death in Heaven, which I think was uh, her best ending ever. That scene in the cafe was just seriously, just absolutely beautiful. Uh, the Doctor lying that he found Gallifrey just so Clara can spend more time with the Doctor. Uh, sorry, Clara can spend more time with Danny and, and vice versa with uh, Clara. She lied that Danny was alive so that... Um, so that the Doctor could find Gallifrey. So yeah, I guess in a way that is very much a uh, something very nice. I think you know, in a way that's that's in a way something I kind of like. You know, they kind of lied to each other, but on good pretenses with good intentions. So yeah, I think in a way that was still good. But Last Christmas was again probably the weakest episode that I've seen in a very very long time. But that was nothing to do with Clara and Danny or the Doctor for that matter. I think Clara were acted brilliantly in. Last Christmas, I think, in terms of Clara's character development, uh, Last Christmas was, again, flawless like the rest of Series 8. Uh, but it's one thing I've began to worry about with Clara. She's became a yo-yo companion. She's going to keep leaving and coming, leaving and coming, leaving and coming. She doesn't know whether she's coming or going, really, this woman. So, yeah, uh, I'm kind of upset with the ending with Last Christmas. I thought they, they had a huge window of opportunity there to, for Clara to, to, for her tenure to end right there. Uh, but, yeah, I think uh, Stephen Moffat's pretty much missed out on a huge window of opportunity there. But, yeah, uh, seeing as though she is staying on for the entire of Series 9, and of course, I will watch Series 9, of course I will, my god, obviously, duh, but, uh, but if, uh, but if she is there for the entire of Series 9, I think she should at least leave for the season finale of Series 9, or the Christmas special 2015, that's, uh, that's pretty much my prediction for Clara's future, because if she doesn't leave now, uh, um, if she doesn't leave this year, then I feel like she will be here forever. I think Jenna Coleman's intentions are pretty much to beat Amy and Rory's record because uh, before Clara, Amy and Rory were the longest running companions in New Who, I think. But now Clara's beat them, I think. Now that she's started filming on Series 9, I think she's beat, uh, I think she's beat all the New Who companions so far. So yeah, anyway, that is pretty much my character review of Clara Oswald. Uh, so then guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, my little look into the character of Clara Oswald. But to give a little conclu conclusion, I think she has uh, improved massively throughout Series 8. I think she has improved a thousand times fold. I think she is just such a more likeable character and such a more hateable character as well, which I think is is something very special. You know, if you if you love a character enough that you have things that you can love and hate about them, I think is, is something uh, very, very special in Doctor Who, definitely. Uh, but all the same, I still look forward to uh, the Doctor and Clara's adventures in Series 9. So then guys, I hope you enjoyed the return of my character reviews. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also subscribe to my secondary channel that I do with Matthew and eight other Bizarre Whovians. It's called Hermits United, so please subscribe to that channel as well. I would very much appreciate it. Also, comment in the section below how you guys believe Clara Oswald has developed as a character uh, from Series 7 Part 2 to Series 8. Or if you want to go as far to back to Asylum of the Daleks. I don't know if you'd want to go that far, but yeah, do whatever you want. Go crazy. And also, if you guys want to keep up to date to everything that we do on the channel uh, and beyond. Also, there is the web address to our website down below there. I will most likely put it in there. Uh, anyway, Matthew will see you on Friday for the return of his best to worst possible series. So then, I'll see you next time.